godly common sense come to first timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 first timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 it says i i also want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety that means with some common sense you must dress up come to verse 15 same chapter but women will be saved through child bearing if they continue in faith love and holiness with propriety that means with common sense or godly common sense come to first timothy chapter 3 and verse 11 it says in the same way their wives also to be women of worthy women worthy of respect not malicious talkers but temperate in a king james version i think you can find the word sound mind and trustworthy in everything so missionaries wives or leaders wives are supposed to have common sense you know why a missionary man is not any different from other men they are not angels they are not mini gods they are human beings just like we also fall they can also fall so a woman must have the common sense and be alert she must have the sound mind to know things come to second timothy chapter 2 and 7 i have already told that verse it says god has not given us a spirit of fear come to first peter now remembering that verse first peter chapter 3 and verse 6 now paul is uh, talking to women he says uh, uh, develop a gentle and quiet spirit i am reading from verse 4 which is of great worth in god's sight for this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in god used to make themselves beautiful see how it makes us beautiful no not angry woman is not at all beautiful but the gentle and submissive woman they were submissive to their own husbands like sarah who obeyed abraham and called him her master i i like the king james version it calling him lord you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear i told you no god has not given us a spirit of fear it here it says if you do what is right and do not give way to fear you make sure that you are doing the right thing and then you don't be afraid you do the right thing and then god will give you the peace and the courage when such things happen first thing i told you is submissiveness to husbands second thing i want to tell you is respecting our husbands or reverence reverence a king james version says reverence which is something more than respect see supposing you are a teacher and your headmaster comes out and you are sitting on the sofa watching tv what will you do first thing you will get up from the sofa you will put on the put off the tv but when our husbands come what do we do go coffee is in the kitchen take the coffee and that's the attitude we have developed i'm not saying we have sometimes you are tired then you should not be like a servant also getting up and this and that also will be very artificial but what i'm trying to say is show respect to your husbands the way you talk the way you look at him sometimes no we so despitefully look at them isn't it we despite the way we give a look at him the way we talk to him Huh? What is that? I don't hear you. Yeah, right. So the way we treat them should be with respect or reverence. You know, when I went to Orissa, come to F M before that Ephesians five thirty three. The reference is Ephesians five thirty three. It speaks about women respecting their husbands however each one of you also must love his wife and as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband king james was said see that she reverences her husband when i went to orissa now i was uh, 
very surprised the way women were calling their husband. They used to call them Swami, Swami, isn't it? Oriya people will know what I am talking about. I used to laugh and laugh and love. Hey, yeah, Swami Vandrichi, yeah, Swami Vandrichi. I used to make fun of my husband. Because Swami is the word we use in Tamil Nadu for God. So this Oriya language is really beautiful, you know, when they give their husbands next place to God. And in Tamil also, the culture is almost the same. It says, Kanavane Kankanda Deivam. That means, Kalla Nalum Kanavan Pulla Nalum Purushan. That's another thing. That means, uh, husband is the God you can see. It may sound very unbiblical, unscriptural, yes it is, but the Bible says, Sarah calling him Lord comes very close to that. Do you see that? comes very close to that. Mikal despised her husband by the way she, she looked at him, by the comment she passed. But the Bible says, Sarah obeyed him, calling him Lord. That kind of a respect we should have for a husband. If, if you don't have, don't worry, try to develop it. So that is the way we love our husband, by our submissiveness, by the way we show our reverence or respect to him. See, this love language differs from person to person. You may think something is love, but your husband may think something else is love. So this is why men and women always clash. You know, for, for wife things, uh, love means uh, oh, the husband comes and sits and talks to you lovingly, puts his hands on your shoulder. Come on, let's go for a walk. It's New Year's Day. Come, let's go out and eat it. Christmas, let's tell if that's the way we want it. But husband says, no, his way of celebration is having sex. That is his way of love. If you say no to sex, sex, he thinks you don't love him. See, this is not wrong. This is God's creation. Many wives, you know, sadly I find, they say no to sex. It's a very sad thing that's happening not even a, not only in the outside world but even inside the missionary world so that's why i wanted to say a little bit about that uh, when the husband no expresses he doesn't directly say that but maybe he brings you some flowers and maybe he is very nice to you that day and say na romba anbu vali id innaki what you are so loving today what happened to you see you are not understanding the heart of a man. You are not understanding the love language of a man. When he says, come to bed, you say, no, I am too, so tired. I went to feel that day, you know, we had prayer cell, we had Bible study, I am so very tired. Huh? That's not the way. See, this sex should be unconditional. It's not a sweet given to an obedient child, no. Whatever it may be, it's a God created us for emotional needs, for physical needs. You know, I had a patient hmm, who used to come to me and well, she was a Christian and clo close friend also. She used to tell me, you know, my husband is an animal. My husband is an animal. I told her, why are you saying like that? He's so good, he's in the choir. Ah, he wants sex every day. And then I, is it not? Then I told her, see, that's not wrong. What is wrong with that? She said, is it not wrong? Is it not sin? Then I had to explain to her, it's not sin. See, the way we are, some of us are brought up, saying this is wrong, this, is, this word is wrong. Sometimes we have wrong ideas about sex. But it is God's initiative. Creation of sex is God's idea, not man's idea. So we should respect that. That is why I am telling women everywhere that don't have wrong ideas about sex. You must give your love to your husband that way, the way he wants it. Not the way we want to give, the way he wants it. And how many uh, complaints we give, you know, about it. Sometimes we don't cooperate when he calls for bed. We simply lie there, look at the roof. There are so much cobwebs, huh? I should be cleaning it tomorrow. What shall I cook tomorrow? Huh? The lizard is there and that. This is not the way we enjoy sex. See? When God has created it, it is something nice. We talk, we are loving. And we also cooperate. We show our love that way. So, uh, what I am trying to tell you is, 
we should be really good wives in that respect i don't have time but i have a cd there for you one lady actually told me you know i close my eyes and say praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord. <laughs> that is not the time to praise the lord you have so much time to praise the lord how sad no it's very sad we laugh but it's a sad thing for men maybe it's something very religious some women act too religious so don't act too religious okay the you be a good wife anyway now coming to the point number 2 love your children loving your children is a tough job now starting with pregnancy that's why we start loving our children praying for the child in the womb sometimes we resent this pregnancy and delivery and we say my husband doesn't understand it one of my cousin or she was going for delivery and she told her husband you know what it means to deliver a child i know you know what he said ama koli kuda mutta ududu adikena sometimes they don't understand but we have that we have go through a very deep like you know even the hen lays eggs what is so great about it her husband said so when we go through such a difficult period sometimes we start learning to hate it so but you come to first samuel first samuel chapter 1 we meet the woman hana she is a, a woman who really enjoyed her pregnancy and her childbirth and bringing up the child see what she says first samuel chapter 1 and reading from verses 21 to 23 here the man uh, you know every year they used to go to the temple uh, along with uh, elkana they used to travel but now that she has a small baby she says when the man elkana went up with all his families to offer the annual sacrifice to the lord and to fulfill his vow hana did not go she said to her husband after the boy is weaned i will take him and present him before the lord and we and he will live there always and elkana says do what seems best to you elkana has been told her stay here until you have weaned him only may the lord make good his word so the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him it's really beautiful you know that time those days women used to feed their babies for 4 years 5 years like that so you know she stayed back at home for that many years without going to church in our language those days it is temple today we say she stayed at home because she wanted to feed the child she wanted to bring him up the proper way see that's uh, bringing up children it's not a play thing nowadays the scene is changing women are working they want to give the bottle as early as possible and go for work they rush for work you know how much damage that does to a child's health at least for one year you should breastfeed the child there's no shame in it it's good at least one year or maybe two years you can feed the child then you can gradually wean it's good for the child so she enjoyed that she loved it she loved the child she sang sang songs to the child maybe lullabies see this lullaby is dying down no nowadays when i was a young girl i used to hear from this house that house kanne ni poonge kanmani poonge thanga pottilam aariro please forgive my singing so nowadays i don't hear the songs and mothers have no time to sing lullabies how sad so ha- uh, hana did what seemed best to her it seemed best for her not to go out but to stay at home and feed the child bring up the child and grow the child so she said okay i'll stay back she didn't want even to go to the temple she found feeding the child being at home is better than going to the temple that's why it says she it seemed best to her she didn't want to do more than what she was capable of doing she was taking care of the child the home the cooking the this and that 
and she was left with no time for outside world. So her priority was the child right then. See, sacrifice has maybe taken a wrong twist. Sacrifice is not neglecting your duty. A woman should understand or should have the sound mind to understand what is sacrifice and what is her duty. Neglecting your duty is not at all um, sacrifice. So, uh, leaving your children in the hostel, like leaving Han Hannah, she vowed to the Lord and left him in Samuel in uh, Eli Eli's house. Sometimes we have to leave our children in the hostel, no missionary work. But there is a difference. Supposing you are in a tribal area where there is no school, where is, there is no facility for children, a place full of malaria, not good for children, maybe you can leave them in the hostel. Come to Matthew chapter 19 and verse 29, Matthew 19, 29. Here Jesus Christ himself is saying about sacrificing your children. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. Sacrificing our children comes there. Little Samuel was sacrificed. You see, there's this beauty in it. So when uh, mission, in our early days, our missionaries used to leave their children in some places. Those days, even Santosha Vidyalaya was not there. We used to leave them in this uh, small hostels, this where where they suffered a lot. I used to feel so sorry for these children. I used to think, Lord, why is it necessary that they have to go through this trial? And the children will cry, the parents will cry. But you know what? After 20 years, 15 years, these children grow up so beautifully and they with so many talents and now they are all married to good people and settle down in good jobs, some in Gulf countries, some here, somewhere. I say, Lord, you are not unfaithful to your sacrifice. You have blessed the children, Lord. I thank you. I, I really, when I see the missionary kids, you know, I praise the Lord saying, Lord, you, their parents sacrifice and you have honored their sacrifice. So, my, even Samuel, you know, he was growing up with two evil men and uh, without parents. Eli's sons had everything, but they didn't grow up in the fear of the Lord. See the difference the Lord makes when you sacrifice your child. But I want to tell you something. This Simply just to be free from burden, don't leave them in the hostel or with your relatives. That's very wrong. This is a new trend I am seeing in the missionary field. Some of them working in cities, in good places, in the office, they simply send their children to um, hostels. And I see the children suffer and cry and I feel very sorry for them. I tell the mothers, don't do that. Get them back. Keep them with you. It's, it's not that God doesn't really require this sacrifice from you because they turn angry and bitter and they start hating missionary work. So be kind to your children. When they come home no, for holidays, if they are in the hostel, don't have programs at that time. Try best. Sometimes I call our missionaries, say, how are you? Children must be from uh, the hostel. They are with you. So how do you spend the time? They say, so sorry, Akka, we have the VBS going on now. We are not able to spend time with them. I feel so sad. Uh, the, just then the summer missionary teams will come. The missionaries will have to go with them. The children are left only with the mother or only with the father. Or sad. I felt so very... During Christmas time they come and the missionaries have Christmas program. Christmas program. I don't know what the solution for this is, but I only tell you... When they come for holidays, do your best for them. Don't neglect them even at that time. Jesus was very fair when he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. God doesn't demand that you give all your time to field and neglect your children. No, that's a wrong thing to think about uh, missionary work. This pregnancy, delivery, and then having a small baby, cooking, cleaning, wifely duties, all these take up your time. But do them happily 
because that's your god given duty so take care of all these things come to second corinthians chapter 8 it's a very encouraging verse second corinthians chapter 8 it's about giving but the principle is the same verse 12 it says for if the willingness is there the gift is accord- acceptable according to what one has not according to wa- what he does not have i will explain to you the meaning it means supposing you have the willingness you have a heart to go to the field i want to work i want to win souls i want to do this i want to conduct this program but you have a small baby in the eyes of god it is as if you have done the field work that's what the meaning of the if you have the willingness if you are dying to do something but you have a baby you do this baby work faithfully it is as if you have fulfilled all your missionary duties it's equal to that we have a missionary called aida her husband devanesan was a very good missionary excellent boy very quiet very soft very hard working suddenly he developed a stroke he he became totally paralyzed he can't even open his eyes he can't talk he's like a vegetable there lying he's as good as dead then he was brought to cmc they have put a tube in his stomach he can be fed only through the tube aida is washing cleaning feeding him regularly taking care of him now four years he's like that and whenever i phone her i visited her she cries say akka why this has happened to me why is this i am in this position i want to go to the field i want to work we were good missionaries she herself is a heart patient i tell her no ma don't worry it is as if you are doing your missionary work don't worry no wife will do i i doubt if i'll be able to be do all these things to my husband but she is doing it so faithfully i encourage her saying yes this is the, what god wants you to do and he is not going to reduce his income for you allowance for you just because you are not able to go to the field so don't worry have this concept very clear in your mind come to first samuel chapter 30 there is another interesting incident where david is going for war he lost